The Catchapult documents real stories of real predators as witnessed and captured by a band of obsessive wildlife filmmakers who live and work in the bush 365 days a year. Previously on The Catchapult. The prides of the Mara worked tirelessly to claim a future for their bloodlines. The Owinos kept their three fast-maturing offspring well-fed from the migration and consorted with Kipuli and his coalition. In between buffalo slaying, the sausage tree pride have reinforced their number with Kipuli's offspring. Waffles, matriarch of the North Clan, has revealed two opposite sides of her life, gentle mother of two cubs and ruthless battle commander. At Juma, the game of leopard thrones rages on while the hungry buffalo hunting Nkuhumas wrestle with the dangers of changing male coalitions. of the Catapult. We are at Juma Private Game Reserve and there is the mighty Duke Tingana. He's on a territorial marking mission. As you can see, although he's showing signs of age, he is still very much the dominant force in this area. I haven't seen him this far south for at least three or four months, so he's starting to reclaim all of the old territory he lost when he was sick. At 13 years old, Tangana is as imposing as he is wily. For five years, he has asserted his dominance and influence as the Duke of Juma. Intruders give this great leopard a wide berth, leaving him to rule unrivaled to patrol with confident authority and to hunt when the whim takes him, even in broad daylight. His technique has been perfectly refined over the years and even alert prey does not detect his approach. Tingana is not one to overdo it in the blistering heat. As the summer progresses, he ups his water intake to compensate for panting out the extremely hot midday. And for the copious urine sprayed during scent marking, where he fastidiously stakes a claim to every corner of his turf. Tingana leaves no doubt in the minds of the residents and intruders of Juma that he is the leopard duke of them all. Showing signs of age he may be, but of course he's still eating a lot. He's successfully hunting, and when he's not successfully hunting, he has of course done a lot of stealing from his son Horsana and his consort Tandi. Now I'm not sure if there's another male around here perhaps that's causing him to call like this, but while we wait to find out, let's head over to Brent, who is sitting with the Unkuhuma pride. As incredible as it was to spend time with those magnificent lions in the Maasai Mara, the sausage tree pride and the winos, it's amazing to be back home in the Lofelt bushveld with the resident in Kahuma pride. Of course, the dry season provides incredible hunting opportunities for these cats. To see the Nkuhuma pride comatose in the heat of the day, it's hard to conceive that these cats are in fact menacing buffalo slayers. 
but never let a lion's lethargy deceive you. The call for breakfast goes out. The pride raddies readying themselves for the assault. Sizing up their quarry. With the scent of lion up their nostrils, a buffalo can be deadly prey. The lions adjust their tactics and then it's all out war. Like military operatives, they maneuver brilliantly to overcome their opponent. Each member playing their role with deadly precision. The meal will feed the pride for a week. And their calls now ring out as satisfied war cries. Wasn't it amazing to see these lions battling with buffalo like that? A constant game of chess. At the moment, they're fast asleep and fat. And uh, hopefully they will get up and get on the move a little bit later. And they're going through a bit of turmoil at the moment. There's a lot of interesting things happening. We've got the Avoca males that are moving closer and closer and deeper and deeper into Nkuma territory. The three Avoca boys have unsettled the peace of the Pride Lands, moving in and helping themselves to kills made by the Nkuma females. But aside from a stolen kill or two, there hasn't been much interaction between the Pride and the new boys in town. The Pride has kept their distance while they get used to their new landlords. But things are shifting. And Amber Eyes was the first to initiate a peace treaty with the Evokers, seducing one of the males in spite of his unattractive limp. So confident are the evokers of their proprietorship that this male doesn't even lift his head to roar. But as the evoker anthem continues to ring out across Juma, a truce between the pride and the males seems to have been negotiated. Even if a few details remain to be smoothed out. Now the future is an open page. I've traveled all the way from Kenya back to my home in South Africa. And although it was an absolute wrench saying goodbye to Waffles and her cubs and all of the members of North Clan that I've come to know and love, imagine how pleasant the surprise was to discover that the Juma clan was denning here for the first time in over a year. Now, although the Juma clan is much, much smaller than the North clan, there are a few hyenas that we've come to know and love over the past few years. One of them is Corky, the matriarch, and her high-ranked female friend, Pretty. Now, the best part about this entire thing is that both of these females have cubs. What a delight to be greeted by such an endearing picture of innocence after my long absence from Juma. It's been over a year since we've had a hyena den on Juma, and the matriarch of this clan, Corky, has a brand new little cub, vulnerable and uncoordinated as this miniature black bear-like creature may still be. The communal den is the center of clan life, so it was not entirely unexpected to find clanmate Pretty arriving with her cubs in tow to move in with her commander-in-chief. Even if one of Pretty's twin youngsters was a little shy with the introductions. Being bigger and more mature than Corky's cub, Pretty's duo quickly set to the task of exploring their new digs. while mom instilled a lesson in wrestling techniques with the littlest cub. Skills a dominant cub will need to master in order to subjugate its two larger house companions. 
While hyena cubs begin exploring the outside world at just a few days old, these youngsters will remain close to the den for many months yet, reliant on their mothers to guard and feed them as they grow in size and confidence. What a joy it is to see hyena cubs on Juma once again, and of course to catch up with the hyenas that I know so well. This one over here is a pretty, she's suckling the two older cubs and the little one dashing about is a Corky's little cub, who of course we suspect strongly is a male. Now, there's some very big differences between the hyenas of North Clan and the hyenas of the Juma Clan. North Clan consists of over 70 hyenas. The Juma Clan, as far as we know, only has five adult females which means that each and every single cub's survival is crucial to the clan itself. Now it is a wrench knowing that I haven't had the chance to watch Waffles' cubs grow up into the terrors that they are going to be in the future, but at least I know they are alive and well and causing chaos as they should. Lately, North Clan Den has been heaving with mischief as a crush of cubs of varying ages occupy themselves with learning the ways of their kind and causing general pandemonium. A recently injured Waffles and her two Wafflets, now dressed in the spottier uniforms of the older kids, continue to provide the bulk of the entertainment, although sometimes the drama comes to them. There is an uneasy truce between elephants and hyena, and in situations like this, the balance could shift in an ominous direction if the hyenas don't heed the larger visitors and skirt them with caution. But interacting with other animals, as much as with each other, is also part of the learning curve. It is both amusing and incongruous to watch the future terrors of the savannah practice their survival skills and hone their soon-to-be killer tools on twigs and bushes. The sex of the cubs is still a mystery, but we suspect they are males, given the way they get on so well. Time will tell. Time will tell indeed. What a remarkable journey it has been following the hyenas of North Clan and of course becoming personally involved in Waffles' struggle to retain her grip on the matriarchy, the pinnacle of the clan's hierarchy. But of course, just because we've traveled halfway across the African continent doesn't mean that these animals here don't have their own dramas to deal with. Now, the matriarch might be a coveted position, but it's also essential to holding the clan together, which is why it was so terrifying when Corky nearly lost her life. With her attention on breakfast, a nasty surprise crept up on Corky. Unprovoked, one of the evoker males stormed upon her with cruel intent, bypassing her kill to assault her directly and brutally. The attack seemed to go on and on, and death seemed sure to be the only outcome. But tenacious and resilient as the best hyenas are, Corky miraculously escaped, leaving the malicious intruder to devour her meal. The devastating encounter left us unsure whether Corky, and therefore her vulnerable cub, were ultimately in mortal danger. But she soon returned to the den, and in spite of deep wounds, resumed her motherly duty as if life hadn't just nearly been snatched from her grasp. settling in for leftovers instead of a fresh meal. Oblivious to the recent trauma, 
The feisty matriarch's young furball and his mischievous companions resumed their carefree existence under her watch. Well, thank goodness that Corky did survive, both for the safety and survival of her cub, but also for the stability of the Juma clan as a whole, because the matriarch is so essential, especially in a tiny clan like this one. Now, as these hyena cubs grow ever bolder, I'm not the only one catching up with old friends. Tristan has traveled all the way to the Maasai Mara to find out how the sausage tree pride is getting on. Good to see the sausages. It's been a long, long time since I've seen them. So they've brought down what looks like a buffalo. Well done. Both males are here. Oh, how awesome is this? This is so cool. We've just missed this. I think if we had been here maybe an hour ago, we would have seen this happen. They have brought down a rather sizable buffalo and it is, by the looks of things, the entire pride. So the cubs have now joined. Awesome to have both the boys around as well and you can see they're very accepting of those cubs around the meal i'm actually quite surprised at how sort of relaxed they are with the little ones feeding right there but it really is good to see all of these guys here and i'm super excited to see the little cubs because i haven't seen this pride in quite a while and like anything when it's old friends it's always great to catch up and meet the new members of the family lioness gives birth after a gestation of just over three months. In 2018, three sausage tree pride lionesses became first-time mothers. This tiny cub was the first of the happy arrivals in June. But the first weeks of a lion's life are extremely precarious, and the little cub disappeared soon after we met it. Then tragedy turned into joy. A few months later, as a second lioness introduced her two little sons to the pride, adorable and full of life. They quickly integrated into pride life, just in time for another batch of fur balls to arrive. Bringing the sausage tree pride nursery to an adorable four. Five lionesses have collectively taken on the task of parenting the creche. And hopefully in this way, will protect the vulnerable cubs through the most trying phases of their young lives. If they can successfully raise these cubs to adulthood, the sausage tree pride will be an unstoppable force in the Mara. What a treat to watch a pride of lions that you know so well grow in number. Now, the cubs obviously add a very fun dynamic to the pride and they also provide a bit of cohesion to this group. We're gonna find that the females are really gonna to come together to provide not only food, but protection from the enemies that lions have in the form of hyenas. And I really look forward to kind of watching these little ones as they grow up and as they learn the ropes from these incredible mothers that have really provided so well for them so far. They've got such an opportunity to learn from probably some of the best hunters that we have out here in the Mara. These guys have the ability to bring down big buffalo and hopefully in the future we'll see these little ones in the same place as these adults with little cubs of their own teaching them these vital skills. As the sun sinks to the western horizon, the sausage tree pride wakes from a day of slumber. As with any family, it's the youngsters who are first to get up. Then, once the blanket of darkness is complete and the cubs have been comforted with a drink of milk, the rest of the pride stretch and ready themselves to move out. Kinky Tail takes up the lead as they stride into the night. The cubs stay close to their mothers. And in the pitch dark, not only prey attempt to remain undetected. Injured competition is the perfect outlet for lionesses to vent their frustrations. Imagine the terror this crippled hyena experiences as a tide of reflecting eyes hone in on it. Yet somehow fueled by adrenaline, it finds the reserves to overcome the pain, to run, fight and survive the face of horrendous odds. Even if 
just for a little while longer. The sausage tree pride under Kinky Tail's leadership remain a force to be reckoned with. Now the sausage tree pride continue to feed off their buffalo carcass. Darkness is starting to descend and that might mean that hyenas will arrive soon. And there are other lions out here that have had a bit of a run in with their mortal enemies of late and when they do, the outcome is never a done deal. As the last herds of the migration file out of the Mara Triangle, the Aweeno Pride have been watching them keenly. One ambitious female gives a determined chase. not on her side this time. After dark, the pride regroups and prepares to hunt more intentionally. The chase is on, and this time the strategy is well executed. The pride enjoying the migration pickings just a little while longer. But it's not long before the familiar whooping and cackling of hyenas fills the air. The happy zebra clan have the advantage of numbers, and the Awinos barely put up a fight as they retreat, thwarted again. Perhaps their caution stems from a memory of their last encounter with this fearsome clan, and how they put up a very committed fight. It really has been an incredible privilege to observe both the Aweeno and Sausage Tree Pride on this cat report over the last migration season. To have watched their interactions with the amazing Mara super predator like the hyenas has been nothing short of incredible. We have witnessed the new birth of cubs to the Sausage Tree Pride to bolster their numbers and the Aweeno youngsters as well. They've come out onto their own as they've grown up into beautiful sub-adult lions and they have really learnt a lot about killing and trying to keep their meals from hyenas and it's going to go a long way to the success of the Pride. But life in the wilderness is equally challenging wherever an animal finds itself and the leopards of Juma, well, they certainly have had their share of challenges and triumphs too. We don't know if Tingana is ever going to father more cubs. His last two, Horsana and Tlalamba, are still within his territory. Horsana, almost three years old, is almost on his way to independence, so we don't know how long we're going to have him with us. We hope for a little while longer yet. Tlalamba, on the other hand, will probably stay in this domain. She'll carve out a piece of her mother's territory and live in Tingana's territory under his protection for some time to come. Now, while Tingana is, of course, a very serious cat, you can see he's taking life very seriously as we speak, Horsana is anything but. The little chief, or clown-in-chief, shows no sign that his comedic tendencies are on the wane as he lurks at the water's edge for easy pickings. While he occasionally demonstrates great skill, Often, he's just plain hilarious. And sometimes, he's simply out of his depth. Arboreally, He's never been the most graceful, patient, or skillful, but his efforts are commendable and tireless. Sana perpetually leaves us laughing as he struggles to get 
the hang of adulthood. While Horsana is a complete clown, his half-sister Tlalamba is a little more elegant, although she is still mischievous. She's going into a difficult period of her life and she's going to need the protection of her father and, of course, still the lessons of her mother, the Queen. In a realm securely safeguarded by the old and unbarred Duke, the rapidly maturing Princess Tlalamba is free to explore as she waits for her mother's return. Queen Tandi is leaving her alone for longer periods, but, like her half-brother Horsana, Tlalamba likes some company, even if her father prefers to be left alone. Hers is a life of increasing independence as she forges her own path towards maturity. Tlalamba's bonds with Queen Tandi remain strong, and despite the princess's increasing independence, she still has much to learn from her mother. Her stealth and stalking skills are particularly well developed, although, like any leopard, they are not always successful. Soon, the Princess Tlalamba must forge her own royal leopard life. It's been a real roller coaster of emotion watching our captivating catapult characters over the last 13 episodes. We don't know how long the Duke's going to be able to hold on to his dukedom. Hosanna is going to have to find his own way in the world. Tlalamba, meanwhile, will carve out a piece of her mother's territory and will watch her for some time to come. The ageing Waffles birthed twin heirs, although succession remains an open question. For the Sausage Tree Pride, an astounding situation where they have young cubs from Kipuli under the protection of unrelated males. The experienced Nkuhuma Pride lionesses have raised their youngsters to safety, and now they're in the process of adding to their numbers with the Avoca males. We hope that you've enjoyed this experience with our magical cat characters from the Masai Mara in Kenya and the Western Kruger in South Africa. We'll see you next time on The Cat Report. <laughs>